I am happy to share with you guys that I have successfully passed the CRTO exam. So I've been doing the exam for the last four days and yesterday I finally got the passing badge sent through to my email. So super happy to have got that one done over the Christmas break. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about the exam experience and give you uh, some of my perspective of preparing for the exam and how I found the exam overall. So in the previous video I made about the CRTO, I mentioned that I expected the exam to be sort of easy-ish. Now, <laughs> I definitely underestimated the exam. When I went into the exam, um, I pretty much hit a roadblock straight away and on the first day I literally could not even get my beacon up and I was like oh my god like what <laughs> what the hell and yeah I had I felt like I had no idea what I'm doing on the first day um, so it did took a while for me to get the ball rolling in the actual exam the course itself actually does prepare you for the exam quite well it pretty much has everything you need but you may need to do some extra Googling uh, for the detailed aspects of a troubleshooting the various things. So you'll still need to rely on some resourcefulness throughout the exam, kind of like uh, in the OSCP where if you find something doesn't work, you have to Google it and you have to troubleshoot it yourself. So I found the same uh, sort of obstacles uh, in this exam as well. Once I started to get the ball rolling on the exam I felt it was pretty good. So the exam itself is 48 hours long spread over four days. So what you can do is you can pause the exam anytime you wish and restart it. So what I did was I uh, pause the exam every 12 hours when I went to bed and then on the next day I would reboot the exam again. So essentially you can get a 12 hours a day of actual hacking time spread over four days which is a very generous amount of time compared to uh, something like the OSCP where they include your break time and your sleeping time within the 24 hours. So the 48 hours is a very generous time frame that they give you for the exam. But I actually feel like it is a good amount of time to uh, actually get through the labs because like I mentioned on the first day, like literally in the first 10 hours, I couldn't even get a beacon up and I had to troubleshoot through all that to even start to get the ball rolling on the exam. Like after the first day, I had one flag, one flag out of eight. So you need six out of eight flags to pass the exam. So on the first day, I had one. Um, on the second day, the ball started rolling a little bit and I got four flags fairly quickly uh, in the morning. And then I was stuck again to get the final flag. Um, didn't get anywhere on the second day. On the third day, I restarted and I got the final flag near the end of the third day. So the final flag was a bit of a struggle. Um, there was a bit of troubleshooting um, to get that final flag to pass the exam. And then on the final day, there were still two flags left, but I didn't really try that hard to get those two flags because once you reboot all the machines overnight, you kind of have to um, set up your whole infrastructure again with all your pivots and all that. And I didn't really feel like doing that. I had three days, pretty much 12 hours a day of a really focused hacking. So by the fourth day, I didn't really feel like doing too much work. So I kind of just gave up on the final two flags on uh, that day. Uh, but a pass is a pass. I'm uh, pretty happy to get that pass. The exam was actually really, really enjoyable. It was, compared to the OSCP, like I know a lot of you uh, guys are going for the OSCP and would appreciate comparisons to that. I think the CRTO is a pretty good follow on from the OSCP, especially now that the OSCP is uh, gonna include Active Directory. 
the CRTO is going to be a great follow-up from that. Um, it teaches you a Cobalt Strike C2 frameworks that I haven't seen any other course out there offer. And the experience is definitely going to be uh, great on your CV, having that Cobalt Strike hands-on experience. Uh, the Cobalt Strike license itself is like 3K and the course, uh, for the price of this course, probably around uh, 500 US dollars or so, you get a lab that gives you full access to a Cobalt Strike and Active Directory environment. And on the exam, it's a similar setup. Um, you get all your tools. Uh, pretty much everything you need to pass the exam is included in the course itself. So when I was actually doing the exam, I took comprehensive notes of all the uh, course material. Um, you actually get the course material for life. So even after you have done the exam and finished with the certification, you can still access the course material. So even though I took comprehensive notes during my uh, lab time, during the exam, I still went back to the course material pretty often, almost as often as I did my own notes to just look up um, references, a look up cheat sheet commands, and just to try and check off my enumeration steps that I have to cover uh, to go through the exam. Um, the lab work itself, it, the notes are super great. Like there's a search function, the notes are detailed in a way that it gives you just enough information so you can perform the exploit, but not too much as to bore you or overwhelm you with information. So the course itself is actually that good to be a really useful reference for you to go back to when you're performing a internal uh, penetration test or a red team. So the exam itself was really, really enjoyable actually. Um, there were definitely times in the exam where I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and then there was times when everything was clicking and then I was just getting flags one after the other. It's a bit like hacking in general, right? Because sometimes honestly you feel like you have no idea what you're doing and other times you feel like a god. Like <laughs> when it works, it feels awesome and you get that adrenaline rush and it's a great feeling. But the process of that is kind of like, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then, oh my God, it actually worked. So uh, that process was actually a pretty enjoyable in the exam itself. I'm sure um, if you've done OSCP or done CTFs and you haven't looked at hints and when you figured something out, uh, that's, you definitely felt that before. Now the exam, I felt the time uh, that they gave you was really good in terms of um, the length of time gave you enough time to sort of just sit down and mull over your enumeration and what you should do and try to plan something out. I didn't really feel extremely rushed in the exam and I think the I really enjoyed the time that I was just uh, contemplating what I should do next or contemplating how I would solve a particular problem that I came across. And it did really feel like when you failed at something, um, you sort of fail closer and closer to the actual pathway that uh, was going to get move you forward um, to get that next flag, um, which I think is a bit different. And I enjoyed that aspect of CRTO more than the OSCP because the OSCP uh, kind of tries to uh, trick you, like it gives you a false paths that look very like the correct path, but uh, they're there just to trick you and waste your time. Uh, for the CRTO, it's kind of like the path is pretty obvious what you have to take. Um, you just have to chew on that problem and try to uh, figure out how you should solve that problem. And I really enjoyed that aspect of the course and the exam as well. So the exam itself felt pretty fair as in it taught you 
everything you needed to pass in the course material but it gave you challenges that you still have to think outside the box to sort of work through as you go in the exam itself. Now the exam, uh, sort of the prerequisites that you should have before you take the CRTO. I don't think you need the OICP to take the CRTO. The CRTO goes a bit more advanced on the Active Directory methodology side of things. But uh, I think if you sort of have the uh, basic command line Kali Linux, you're comfortable with using all that, you could potentially jump into the CRTO and do that no problem. And then once you work through that, your Active Directory knowledge would be a far higher than what you would need for the OSCP and then you should be able to get through the AD material on the OSCP fairly easily after that. It would also be helpful if you had some networking skills because there were some parts of the exam where troubleshooting it did require some of that. You don't really need any C sharp development experience to jump into this course. It's fairly basic, the type of uh, programming that you'll need for the course. Most of the tools that you need come pre-compiled for you anyway. You can sort of pick things up as you go if you pretty much just have a basic level of programming experience. Overall, the exam was really enjoyable. It's probably the most enjoyable exam that I have ever done. The time that they give you, allowing you to pause the exam and spread out the time over four days. The fact that it's not proctored and you don't have to do a lab report afterwards. You can pretty much submit your flags in the exam portal and by the end of it, if you've got enough flags, you pretty much just pass. So it's pretty much all hands on um, without the proctoring. It does kind of keep things a bit casual. So you can sort of just sit at home and have the computer open. And then when you think of something, you can hack. And then if you want to take a break, you can sort of do that at your own leisure. So that whole experience was uh, super enjoyable for me. And obviously Cobalt Strike, getting the experience to use Cobalt Strike uh, learning some of the uh, antivirus bypasses that you can do and customizing it for those purposes. Really useful information uh, definitely is going to come in handy in future penetration tests. The Active Directory methodology, I really enjoyed the Kerberos attacks and the more uh, complicated uh, sort of pivoting that was uh, showcased in the course. I actually haven't come across that in the past. And the material itself in the course, that is gonna be a really valuable reference cheat sheet for me in the future as well. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions about the CRTO exam, feel free to drop it in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in and I will catch you in the next video.